Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are across the known world. And welcome back to another exciting interview on The Crown Between Two Roses. I'm Countess Beatrice. And I'm Duchess Angelin. Uh, before we kick off with the interview, I'd just like to do our acknowledgement of country. Good nobles, we come here together in a spirit of fellowship, deepening of our skills, sharing of our knowledge, and a shared interest in the search to find truth through experimental archaeology and historical inquiry. It is in this context that I, Engelin, on behalf of my kingdom, acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands upon which we gather. We recognize their continuing connection to land and culture, and we pay our respects to their elders past, present, and emerging, and the elders from other communities who may be here today. And today we have the Baron and Baroness of Ilthofen joining us, Baron Simkin and Baroness Elena. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Elena. Oh, Eleanor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should have got yes. that up before we started. It, it's it's fine. It's been announced in court like that as well. <laughs> I've been calling heralds for years now. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening to you both. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we are very excited. And uh, Ilthafen is one of our baronies that is a you know, we do span across two countries and you guys are in New Zealand. We are, uh, yep. yes. Yeah. So whereabouts is Ildhafen located? Um, so Ildhafen as a barony is uh, effectively everything north of Lake Taupo. So it covers uh, Northland, Auckland and the Waikato in New Zealand. Um, it's comprised of two groups covering that. So there's, there's Ildhafen itself, which covers Northland and Auckland. And then there's the Canton of Cloyne, which covers um, the Waikato and bits of the Bay of Plenty. So yeah, yeah there's, there's a few people that sort of sit, live on the very edges and they're technically in the Bay of Plenty, but they're part of Cloyne, so. Yes. So it's so, an yeah. interesting configuration because the Canton is quite a large part of the barony, but we, we sort of umbrella the whole yeah. lot. La and land we now have a scattering of people in the far north which is quite exciting yeah um, so. so i have high hopes of forming a hamlet up there at some point but yeah. that's that's, that's later awesome. yeah <laughs> it's, it's quite quite a big land mass I suppose. yeah so how long does it would it take you to drive end to end um Ooh. well okay Who, so who's driving no, <laughs> um <laughs> so i mean here here to the what it's about three hours so from Salfo, from here three hours south Salfo, four five, hours south. Well, i'm thinking if you were to go all the way up to to uh, cape rianga it's more like five hours yeah the so roads from, get dodgy up there may, maybe eight hours if you went from the extreme to the extreme yeah it's quite large yeah <laughs> Yeah, and so, I have driven yeah. some of those roads and it, it freaked me out. And as a seasoned yeah. Australian driver, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of them yes. are interesting. <laughs> yes, they are. I'm from the far north originally and I still don't like it. <laughs> it's, it's not comfortable. <laughs> but you learned it. The roads are made for cows, not for cars. Yep. But yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> Yes, and big herds of sheep. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but I digress. <laughs> no sheep jokes tonight, it's all right. No. Oh, no. We can't Different guarantee kids. there won't, won't be any in the comments, but we won't make any. <laughs> no, no, we don't we don't do that here. <laughs> make make comments. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, change the subject. <laughs> could, you, could you tell us a little bit about the, the name Ildhafen and, and what it means and also the heraldry for the group? I think Ildhafen is an old Norse name for um, burning harbour. Is that right? Yeah, I believe. It's, it's a reference to the volcanic area that, that the city is in. Um, I presume there was quite a Norse presence when the, the group went. Uh, chose its name yeah and uh, that's where the little boats come from <laughs> yeah so yeah i'd say that auckland city itself we've got uh, is it 53 volcanoes that they found something like that within the last count within the city yeah. um so you know yes theoretically heavily volcanic area um so yeah what what from what we understand iltafen means either um fire port or fire harbor yes um, 
So, yeah. so yeah, referring to the fact that you know we are surrounded by volcanoes, um, and and actually our newest one is part of the barriers that lead into the um, harbour itself. Um, mm. So that's um, uh, yeah. ugh, Rangitoto. Um, Most which, of the craters are flat now, but they're there. Yeah. So it's it's quite an exciting thing. geological but, area. But yeah, <laughs> Rangitoto is our newest one, and it's about. 400 years old oh you're straying outside my knowledge base. yeah it, 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 <laughs> it, 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 it is you could tell geologically it it's moved. That, basically. Um, and and yes. uh, and i mean that that also sort of leads into our heraldry um mm. so i mean because we've got it behind us effectively the 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 scooping shape in the back is rangy toto um so it, it is the heraldic uh, influence of the volcanoes we've got around us and, and particularly our new one um obviously with, with the two lymphads um for the harbor um mm. no idea why they chose blue and white but um yeah that that's basically what the heraldry is supposed to indicate it is the two boats with with the volcano behind mm. so um yeah it sort of it spans through our name it spans through our heraldry um yeah and and is you know all around us all the time really mm, so. yes yes some parts of New Zealand shake we haven't quite gotten that bad yet but it's it's commonly said that if a volcano does go it's going to be quite a large one so that's something to look forward to I believe we're actually entitled to use the Kaid um, device as well yep. but it was decided long ago not to bother and we just haven't yeah seen fit to change that yeah so yeah as as i think all the present isles groups were entitled to yeah. we, we do Get have the right, the right to, to augment the arms of the kaiden cross so yeah. um but and we've got sample heraldry of, of this mm. with a kaiden cross in a couple of places where yeah. people were playing with the idea but it's never been been taken yeah. forward can so, you give us the the reasoning behind that not I, no, really? no, I mean, it kind of predates <laughs> us. So, so we've only been with the Barony about seven, seven or eight years. This is, I think this is about eight, eight, eight year with the wow. Barony. So wow. um, obviously we, we <laughs> yeah. became a Barony way, way back when um, the Crescent Isles joined uh, Lockhart, so back in mm. 2003. Um, and it was then that we, as a, as, a, as a group, we were given the right to use the cross. Um, yeah. say, and I've, I've seen... Um, in the Herald's notes, a whole bunch of, of options that were put, worked on, but for whatever reason, they never took any of it forward and no one has mm. ever felt the need to revisit that. Um, okay. So It may have just been that, I mean, we, yeah, because we, I don't think we were a barony during the Kai days. No, we so it may be that it was just thought that it wasn't appropriate. Yeah. For that reason, I am speculating. I haven't asked. Yeah, <laughs> or it could, it, could, it could just be that, you know, people got busy with with other things and never quite got around to submitting the paperwork yeah. um so <laughs> but yeah, yeah you know one, one of those things it just kind of happened yeah so. yeah. yeah i know uh, a little bit about your barony and there there's quite a heavy influence on the arts and sciences there Yep. Yeah. That seems to be our jam. Yeah, um, it does. Um, yeah. I, I know our arts and sciences officer always, you know, has has the standard report of arts and sciences is happening. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah, whenever, whenever we ask them, it's like, yeah, arts and sciences are Stuff's happening. happening. Um, Populous doesn't need a lot of encouraging to just do its thing, which yeah. is great. But um, um, yeah, no, arts yeah. and sciences is, is alive and well. Um, I mean, we, we do quite a lot of music um music and dance has been a, a big thing yeah i think that's what um yeah i think that's what we're kind of known for yeah. it might be my perception because music's something very close to my heart but i think we have a bit of a reputation for that um yeah. and various other arts and sciences as well yeah we, we've got um, a couple of very good crafts people within the barony yeah. that like to make lots of interesting things and yes build us you know our Beaut portraits are getting painted at the moment. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, we, we're getting we're getting yeah, baronial right. portraits painted. <laughs> um, we, you we've don't have got to sit there for eight hours straight while. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, yes. she, she sketches oh, yes, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Every Sunday for three hours. No. Um, 
we're, we're doing it the uh, the modern <laughs> way. <laughs> I think the painting is going to be yeah. The painting is a period fashion. Yeah. So in the style. Yeah. So. Yes, we've got um, people who do brick stitch and all sorts so of things. curious things. We're we're very lucky. Um, we've got a uh, a laurel master. Pelican Master, whatever, well, I'm quite sure what he carries now. Which Laurel and Pelican uh, Master Braithwaite. Oh, yes. We have, um, we have in who, who just likes to make things. Yes. Um, so, yes. out of anything. So, you know, metalwork, woodwork. Anything he, he's, but fabric, I think. Yeah. He, he's yeah. steadily building you know, a small medieval village in his backyard. Um, he's, so, he's down in the, in the canton. It's uh, yeah. one of my favourite venues for Canada. Yeah, yeah we're, we're very lucky. They they yeah. uh, they open their home to us a couple of times a year and slowly add more infrastructure to it every time. So, wow, that's um, pretty cool. I have to say, I was very lucky because uh, Honoré and I um, acknowledged uh, Edward with his laurel. And when we visited, he had the fire breathing dragon. Yep. Oh, yes. 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 That was awesome. Yeah. 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 So good. Flap, yes. Flap the dragon is looking a little bit worse for wear these days, but he's still around. He's still there, yes. Um, yes. But yeah, they've uh, yeah they've done. Ed, Ed and Elizabeth have done a lot of of bits to really make some really good immersive events. Really um, good. Yeah. So I think we've um, seen a few photos from them um, shared across the known world uh, back when you guys were able to have events and the rest of the world were still. Hunkering yes. at home. So. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I'm, I'm currently driving the Barony's Instagram account. And so during that period, I did take great joy in gloating a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but, but these we, pictures we... do come out so beautifully. You know, they, they've made structures with yeah. all the slate on the ceilings. And then um, oil lamps. Eleonora and... and Rudiger have made these beautiful hanging oil lamps, which just give the whole yeah. thing a lovely glow. And you just, you know, you, it, it's just delightful. Yep. Yeah. And it really and makes the atmosphere amazing so and it makes for very, very cool photos. It does. <laughs> and, and, we, and we took great pride in, in um, we had a, an event in back end of February, um, which. Oh, the massacre. We, no, no. Yeah. Um, St. Sebastian's. Oh, this which, year. This year. Right. Which Sorry. we think was probably the second biggest event in the known world in the last year. After Canterbury Fair, <laughs> yeah. we, we had we had about ninety people at it because of things um, yeah. at that stage. So yeah, we had ninety yeah. people camping, being fed. Yeah. So yeah, so it's we're, not we're, bad for such a tiny barony. <laughs> we're, we're very lucky with um, with New Zealand's response to to the whole pandemic thing, and that mm. we are able to um, pretty much have events exactly as we used to have them prior to the pandemic. You know, we, we've got mm. very few restrictions on gatherings. Um, we don't have restrictions yeah. on, you know, food service, so we can still do feasts. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been good. We're, we're very lucky, and we we feel very privileged Indeed. that we can, you know, still do that sort of thing when so many other parts of the world can't. Um, yeah, absolutely. It was really nice. Like, even though I think a lot of people were, were jealous that you guys got to do it, and. Um, we were waiting patiently. It was nice to see that it's still there and waiting for everyone um, yeah. to, to mm. come back to it. And it's, it's it's going to be a little bit different, but, you know, the, all the beautiful parts to it and the reasons why we show up, it's still still going strong. So it's Indeed. a yeah. Indeed. little glimmer, um, of, I think. Indeed. I, I say I was gloating, but I, partly just sharing that, you know, yeah, there is hope and we will endure and the, mm. the game will continue yep. <laughs> so, yeah yeah i think and we're definitely on a bit of a stage in that space really um across the whole kingdom now with the events that we have been running yep. and yeah and and there is definitely members across the known world who are very jealous and very actively watching what we are <laughs> What yeah, we, doing? <laughs> we we actually had um, at at, um, at Canterbury Fair this year um, one of our our populous the, the the lady that's actually doing our paintings she spent a bit of time in um, various bits of Canada uh, three or four years ago now and she did a couple of walking tours around Canterbury Fair for her Canadian friends who were having. Uh, virtual get-togethers mm. and she's so she she's <laughs> dialed into them and took them for a walk around around fair and showed canada canterbury fair 
um, so that they could, you know, enjoy an event through, through the screen. It was Eldermere, wasn't it? Yes, Eldermere. Um, yes. So she was associated with a couple of groups there. So uh, that was quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. That, that is awesome. Yeah. Um, talking about events, what would be the, the one event that you would encourage uh, people to travel to your barony to come and, and experience? If we're talking, in, including the Canton, it would have to be something at Braithwaite Manor. Probably yeah. St. Sebastian's well, or Labor Weekend. Labor Weekend's yeah. a little longer, three days. Yeah, um, for me it would be Labor Weekend yeah. over St. Sebastian's. So St. Sebastian's is typically, they're, they're two very different events in some ways. St. Sebastian's is very organised. Um, it's got things like, it, it's predominantly it's an schedule. archery championship. There's a, a fairly tight schedule mm. um, and there's lots of things going on. Labor Weekend is more of a hardcore living history camp. We do everything in camp. Food is prepared from scratch as much, um, as, possible. As, much as possible in camp. Fire cooking only. Fire cooking only. About the only wow. thing we use the house for is to be able to get access to a bathroom and to keep um, milk, I think, lives in the fridge in the yeah. house if it's because it's normally fairly warm. If it's cold, it doesn't. It lives in camp. But um, most other things are stored but everything at, on else the campsite. We, we comes yeah, into camp. try and do it as properly as possible. And yeah, and, and it yeah. has a different flavour because there is no schedule and yeah. everyone's just everyone just chips in and does stuff and yeah. it's lovely. There, there's so normally there some, is a different atmosphere. Yeah, there's normally some kind of project going on over the mm. weekend. So mm -hmm. I, last year um, they, they had been felling some trees so we split logs down tradition in, in a traditional manner and started car they, we were carving out yeah. i think it was big um bread mixing bowls that's right we were carving yes Ooh. um so but it's, it's, there's normally some things. some kind of period projects um we've we've done pottery and um, pottery firing on camp oh, yes. um in in the bonfire that's um right. and then build a rocket oven to glaze them um <gasps> Like, this is just happens in Ilkarkas. Like, oh, yeah, you know? we'll just build a rocket <laughs> oven and, and make that happen. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is why the arts and sciences is so easy for us and for the officer is because <laughs> they, not to discount the effort they put in, but the, the the general approach of our populace seems to be, I wonder if this is a thing that could be done. Let's try it. And by the next day, it's there. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I wanted a, a stand for my bray heart and... Um, Master Braithwaite and I had a random conversation and I think he sort of measured the sides of the heart and then a few weeks later um, a photo went on Facebook with a little caption saying guess who can anyone guess what this is and I was sitting there going yeah I know what that is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hadn't talked about any barter system or anything he just went there was some maths rocking around in my head and I wanted to see if I could do it <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah. Be, be, it keeps but, happening, you know, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's the whole group. make groups. a rocket furnace. Yes, we could. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the whole group's That's approach great. to things. So, so really for is. me, I think Labor Weekend, while, while archery is my thing, or one of my things, I love it. Um, so St. Sebastian's is great because it's, it's lots of archery games. Mm. I actually, I think I prefer, personally, I prefer Labor Weekend because Just it's to see what will happen. <laughs> a to see what will happen and b because it is that getting back to basics camping yeah um figuring stuff out remembering all the base skills um yeah and and living as a camp properly um that's what the canton events tend to be more as as the camping stuff the city doesn't have that sort of facility unfortunately so yeah, so we do we more, have, more we have feasts in halls. A lot of people dances. in, in Iltafen City who are very talented and to the north, of course. But um, yeah. Yeah. So the magic happens when we all come together. So, but yeah, <laughs> de definitely if someone was going to travel, I, I would recommend either of those two events yeah. as, yeah. as really good ones to go to. I think our specific city event that always happens is summer event yeah. in late November. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's a good. But that's one, so. that's less camping, more, more. still a weekend. Weekend so. event, dancing, music, fighting. So that that normally has um, the oh, yes, we do a tournament. the martial, uh, the rapier and the, the heavy championships and stuff at it, and hunting um, 
archery hunting games going on. Mm. Um, and a bit of a dance. And dancing and, and, of and, and lots of food. <laughs> yeah. Lots of food. Yeah. 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 And usually instruments. Yeah, and lots food. of instruments, lots of food. And some rapier and some food. And yeah, yeah. it's pretty good. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Food, food is a big part of the camp, of the group. They're quite good at it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like I, cooking and I don't like food preparation. So to me, the um, you know, putting a feast together for 50 people is just a nightmare. But some people just do it effortlessly. And it's just, to me, it's witchcraft and it's wonderful. Yeah. And these incredible, <laughs> you know, dishes just appear. Um, so, yeah. So they make it look effortless. And, and appar apparently, <laughs> apparently, when you're wearing a pointy hat, if you, actually, if you say to someone, oh, it'd be really good if there was some more of that chicken around. And about two minutes later, a bowl of it appears. It's like, oh, excellent. This is good. I like yeah. this game. <laughs> <laughs> the small children are nicely trained. Exactly. So, <laughs> so you were saying that you've only been in uh, Eeltarpen for about eight years. Is that when yep. you started the SCA? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we started... I think seven years. On well, 2013... I think it was the back, the very back end of 2013, because it was okay. a, it was right, summer yes. event 2013 that we went to, sort of in November 2013. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So how, how did you? <laughs> seven or eight, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, how did you find the SCA? <laughs> like, what brought you in, and, and tell us about how you just started. Well, we both had been reenacting before in other groups. Um, so Simkin is from London originally, so he'd yeah. done a lot from there. Yeah, um, he been, came over here about 17 years ago. Yeah, 2004. So I've, I've, I've been reenacting for yeah, about 28 years. Yes. Um, um, so we've both done metal weapon fighting and various bits and pieces in other groups. And we were at a multi-group weekend event and I think ran into some SCA people yeah, who we, were doing... We, spot of music things. well yes yeah. so we, we we ran into we yeah we, we ran into the sca proper at, at a um it's an event called nama um which mm. is basically it's all, all of the new zealand reenactment groups get together and have an event once a year um yeah. and the sca happened to be at it because it was near to where it was actually in auckland that year because it moves around every year that's so that's that's when we actually met them but i think we, we, we knew of the sca of yeah. because there's a fair amount of crossover. Um, there's, there's a number yeah. of people that play SCA that also play with the metal weapons groups and, and always have. Yeah. Um, so we're not so, a very big country. So we, <laughs> we were, know each other. yeah, we, we were, we were very much aware of the SCA, but we hadn't kind of run into the SCA as it were. Yeah. Um, and we ran into them at that event and got convinced to come along to, cause that would have been October. And we got convinced mm. to come to the summer event in the November. That's so right. we, we rocked up to that one, um, not really knowing what you know how the SCA worked and various bits and pieces. And it was a crown event. And it was a crown event. Um, <laughs> we were it terrified. Was, it was um, I had absolutely no idea what to do. Um, we we're still getting used was, to the idea. It was of... and Leiden were crown. Yes. Um, and so there was all of a sudden there was all this etiquette which you know we didn't have in our other groups. <laughs> we didn't even know about uh, barons like, and oh, baronesses. Okay. Suddenly there were these <laughs> other hats. <laughs> happening yeah it was great so it was, yeah, it was great fun um so that, that was sort of our first intro to the sca proper yeah and we decided that that was fun so we kept coming back yeah um i think the for me the fact that it's an organized group um you know there there were regular dance sessions and there were regular music sessions mm -hmm. and there were regular things happening on, on a weekly or at least a regular basis for me, that was quite a big one because a lot of the other groups are either just very combat orientated, so it's all about the swords, which I'm fine with, but it doesn't, you know, doesn't lend any scope for music or anything else. Um, and a lot of them just weren't, yeah, weren't organised enough yeah. to have anything like that going on. So yeah. the, the concept of coming to a weekly dance session or something like that was wonderful let's do that yeah. <laughs> why not um yeah so how long have we actually been wearing these hats three years 2017 suffice to say we didn't know as much as we could have about all of the ins and outs of the sca by the time 
this came about. Yeah. So there was a bit of learning on the job. Yeah. Quite a lot of learning on the job. <laughs> yeah. Our predecessors were very, 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 very helpful. Yeah. And um, Rashad and Ginevra, who were in Southern Guard at the time, were absolutely wonderful. Um, at my first Canterbury Fair, I basically followed Geneva around the whole time. Like, what do we do next? <laughs> <laughs> What's the dress code? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? And yeah, and they made sure I didn't do anything stupid. So it was incredible. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I am curious, uh, having, uh, from, from what you were saying, you would have been in for about three years when yep. you put your hand up, uh, put your names in the ring, really for yep. Baron and Baroness. Um, what what drove that decision? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be my fault. Um, no, so, so we were... I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Um, so, so um, yeah, when when it became... When, when Rudy Grin and Eleonora announced that they, they were looking to step down, um, and we were, we were having a chat about, oh, you know, because they were we'd only been in three years so they had always been our baron and baroness so it's like oh what does this mean and what you yeah. know we, we just got talking about bits and pieces it's like it kind could of we just, do that yeah um and it was it's, sort of a, it's if we could do that yeah. I mean, no we couldn't we could do that <laughs> <laughs> because at that point yeah they were the only baron and baroness hmm. that we had ever known we hadn't been to canterbury sure. fair before so yeah. we we had nobody else and we thought Okay, yeah. I we'll think that I think with with the example has been set. Yeah. <laughs> so we yeah. Can uphold that. Yeah, pretty pretty much. Um, I mean, as we say, you know, we, we we're were making both... it sound like it was a whim. It wasn't, but it, it yeah, yeah, it just I mean, organically happened with the conversation. Really. Exactly. Yeah, it, it it sort of happened. I mean, as we say, you know, we we were both we're both we have a lot of experience in reenactment, so it wasn't like we were also learning about how to to play the game we understood that side of things yeah so it was more a well you know we could do that mm, mm. That, that could be a an interesting thing to try um you know we've we've both got a love for the game and wanting it to grow and prosper yeah. um and seeing things happen and we sort of having spoken with sort of idly really with with Rudiger and Eleonora um had the the bit it's like well if, if we're in that position we can try and make things happen um and, and try and enhance the game for everyone else and yeah you know try it's, try and steer the ship as it were <laughs> it sounds a bit cheesy but it just seemed like a really good um opportunity to serve the barony yeah and pretty much yeah um, which which was how we saw them doing it and so, so that's what we wanted to do yeah um yeah is there, is there a tradition or some awards that um unique to Ildhafen that are special for you um we we we've instigated a couple yeah so we started yeah. the Lodeman. yeah so yeah, yes, there are. So Il Ilkhafen has got a, a set of awards that are loosely modelled on, uh, I guess, life in medieval London. Um, so our awards are things like we have Guildsman, which are our ANS awards, and we have um, the Militia for for the Marshal, and we have they're all little ships, they're, and they're they're all little yeah. ships with different <laughs> colour beads, um, and um, and we've got we've got a Freedom of the City. So, the people that live outside the city that help us mm. so we, we've got a whole bunch of them and they're all really nice to give out um for various reasons um and we've mm. we've sort of added to that we added an extra one for people that um we had a number of people that decided that emigrating to darton was a really good idea i don't um, approve we don't really approve don't. of this but <laughs> no, apparently it's that. the thing Dar Dar so darton likes to say that they, they are the old half and retirement village um <laughs> Because they, they have the first Baron and Baroness of Ildhafen and they've got a few other Ildhafen members that have gone down. It's, so It's a fluid situation, they'll be back. <laughs> but it, the Lodeman was created because we wanted to tell these people that we, we they were still ours, no, um, that we, we still, you know, wanted them back. Yeah. They were welcome to come, come back, back whenever anytime. they wanted. 
so that so, was what so, that was for. yeah so we instigated that one yeah. um which is a nice it's a nice one to give out in some ways it's a bit sad because people are leaving yeah, us. it usually means someone's going away um, <laughs> but, but yeah. it, it's nice to to acknowledge that yeah. they were a huge part that you know those people were a big part of the barony they were a big part of the group um and they would be missed yeah um so yeah that that's been a fun one apart from that we don't really i mean we, we have a few newish ones that are coming on we've got one in the pipeline but it's still getting sorted out we have the one i'm wearing now we do which was um uh, instigated by mistress katarina yes um in in conjunction with chats with us and this is a movable award so i'm holding it at the moment but it's for performance so the concept is i may get this wrong but the concept is that performance is uh, it's it's a, it's once it's done it doesn't stick around it's not like an embroidery piece or something like that so there was it was to have something to recognize that something that had been done and then but you only hold it for technically six months you've held it I've for held a bit. it for too long but I do blame the pestilence um <laughs> yeah so I'm now on the lookout for somebody else to award this to yeah and and so on and so on um and, it, and it's awarded so it's it kind of by the person who last had it yeah yes. it, it, it it is pretty much entirely chosen by the person that currently holds it to pass it on um there, there is a sort of loose proviso that if they don't pass it on in, in good time that we will reclaim it and pass it on ourselves yeah. um but that hasn't happened yet because we mm. currently hold it um, yeah. <laughs> so I, in did, theory i should be reclaiming it, it from her excellency to give it out again That's but um <laughs> it was to somebody else first and then yeah. he gave it to me so, so yeah and we're just waiting for uh, some events to come along so that we can have some performances yes. and then yes. it can be moved on again yes. um so and, and we kind of like those sorts of awards that um that move around that encourage people to keep doing the things yeah. um you know it, it's yeah it, it's an encouragement and it's again it's it's just trying to enhance and remind people that that constant playing and constant trying stuff mm. and you don't necessarily have to be you know the best at that thing yeah. to be able to get to get recognized um mm. and the, these things will happen because mm. We notice and the populace notice, even yeah. if you don't think anyone is listening while you're hiding away in the corner playing your recorder or whatever it is, um, yeah. someone will notice. And someone's appreciated. <laughs> and someone is appreciating yeah. it. So, um, yeah. So yeah. It, the, the po I think the point of this is not, not simply for the, not simply for the newcomer, but also for the excellence. Like there's, there's awards for, I mean, the Guildsman is for arts and sciences. And I got that quite early on in my, career is the wrong word um for for <laughs> driving the music group and that that wasn't sort of an excellence thing that was just a getting started yeah. thing um yeah we, we i think we're, we're trying to sort of yeah recognize people who have got that initial level but are still striving to get better and better and better and better yeah, yeah. because that's something that's not always um seen <laughs> Sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> yeah, you had to. <laughs> yes. Um, did you have a question in England? Uh, sure. I thought you'd have a go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so in in the time that uh, you've been playing, is there something that you are particularly proud of? I think you might be particularly proud of the awards around your neck, but uh, <laughs> is there anything else? Or, or Simkin, do you have something that um, you're um, proud of that you've done? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I mean, so we haven't had, I was talking with, with um, Ginevra as New Zealand registrar. We haven't had a authorized heavy combatant officially in Ilfhafen since 2016. Mm. Um, it's just, it's not a discipline that's been popular mm. in, within the city. We've got them within the canton, but within the city itself, um, rapier is, is the game of choice. Mm. Um, you know, and we, we have at least two mods in the city at the moment. Um, 
so one of the bits we we really wanted to do when we um when we were you know made baron and baroness was to try and restart some heavy combat within uh within the city and and the the yeah. the, the ill Hearthen group rather than the claim group um and yeah. yeah through a lot of cajoling badgering convincing threatening no no maybe a bit of bribing <laughs> urging urging people to do that um we started uh training um the start of this year start was of this year? year yeah uh, i think it was just after fair yeah yeah start of feb mm. yeah so start of february this year anyway this year um so we, it only took us a few years to get we, we managed managed to convince <laughs> enough people to get together and we um uh, uh, Rudiger, uh, Baron Rudiger, my my our predecessor, um, very kindly offered to drive up from uh, Hamilton every week on a Sunday morning. So he, he gets up and on the road at about seven thirty in the morning to get up here for nine um, to do a couple of hours of, of heavy training with us. Mm. Um, so we're yeah we're working towards getting uh, our first couple of heavies authorized uh, in the city. So that's like we're we're pretty proud of pretty delighted um, about that actually. for the group yeah so there's yeah rapier seems to flourish archery all that sort of thing but because the armored fighting had stopped completely it was very hard to get mm. it started again even if there was a tiny bit you can keep momentum but yeah, yeah. coming yeah, back from nothing stopped. is difficult so yeah. Hopefully, and it's still, you know, in the early stages, but hopefully this is, is restarting it properly. So we're very grateful to Rudiger um, for helping us with this. Yep. And yep. yeah. And and if, if, every, last. if everyone that's currently going through training, plus um, actually the second Baron of Ildhafen, um, uh, Sir Inigo, has just sort of started coming back to doing stuff and just, just yep. reauthorized as well. Yes. And we've got someone moving in from uh, from Cloyne and somebody else moving up, potentially moving up from Sovereign Guard, who also does heavy. We might actually have a a, a group of about eight <laughs> heavy fighters in, in the city for the first time yeah. in in many years. Um, so yeah, so we're quite yeah. excited about that to yes. try and try and get that going again, and yeah, just just start that discipline up again. Yeah. Um, you know, it's yeah, yeah. I think that was the only thing that was you know completely lacking of the standard things that go on in a group we had none of that so now we do that's very exciting and it mm. sounds like it's, it's kind of yeah. getting getting big quickly so i know how it's, hard yeah. it's to, to yeah. start in a in an area where there's only a couple of people so <laughs> mm. yeah. yeah yes we yeah. hope it will work yeah, exactly <laughs> so uh, yeah yeah it's been a long project mm. um mm. And it has been one I've been driving because it's something like, again, from, from my archery background, I want to do combat archery um, and I do rapier. So it's like, well, I might as well do heavy as well and at least understand how it works. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Rudiger's giving me a very good lesson at the moment in how to defend my leg. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, I think yeah, Anglin yeah. and I have both been through that lesson yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, uh, no. we strapped on armor we strapped on armor and went sort of actually got up to a bit of power for the first time two weeks ago and yeah he spent the best part of an hour reminding me that i actually needed to defend my left leg with the shield not just sort of <laughs> vaguely hang the shield there um so yeah it was colorful yeah it was. <laughs> there are some good creams to help with the bruises I'll, um... there are. <laughs> so, yeah so, yeah, it's been good. Uh, yeah. Um, i'm actually very curious about your personas right do we have personas well i do okay do you want me to start yeah you start and i'll think okay um <laughs> So um, my, my persona, well, effectively both our personas, we, we do uh, late 14th century, so sort of targeting around about 13, 90. 1390, 1380, 1390. Um, I have always done late 14th into very early 15th century through my entire reenactment career. Um, so the group I was predominantly with in the UK 
um, that that was our timeline. We did 1350 through 1415. Um, and most of us were sitting in that last sort of 20 years of the, the 14th century. Um, as I say, I, I, I got into the hobby through archery. Archery has always been a, a thing I've enjoyed. So um, my persona is, is a former professional archer, mercenary archer, um, fought in the, the Hundred Years' War, teamed up into the Condorati in, um, in the Italian War, the, the um, wars in, in the Italian city-states, um, so the White Company, etc. And then uh, once I'd made some money, I returned back to, to my homeland and retired. Um, so that's that sort of yeah Simpkin in a in a nutshell. Um, <laughs> we keep joking that you know they made me a baron and taught me how to write um, and vaguely read. Um, you can write his name. I now. can write my name and everything. It's great um, <laughs> because because yeah I, you know the 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 background for for Simpkin has always been you know he he was a effectively a mercenary archer. Um, so mm, yeah, yeah that, that's that's sort of my persona um i when we first started reenacting pre-sca i just basically chose the similar time period because it made sense and because the garb was easy enough um i have i have a standard pattern which is long sleeve kirtle sideless surcoat and many colors and that's it <laughs> so yeah um, when when I first, I think I think the spice thing came about before the SCA. Yes, it did. We were doing various, um, you know, school shows, uh, shows, festival. Yeah, so sort of there, there's a few schools that do at a couple of show, um, schools around the place. Yeah. And I set myself up as a spice merchant because it was fun. So I had lots of little bowls and jars of different things, and people got to guess what they were. Number of people who have never seen a nutmeg hole is amazing i know we all know what it looks like yeah. we've all ground one from scratch these people just have no yeah. idea i haven't and, just saying yeah. no, you've got to. Yeah, don't so go much home. better freshly ground nutmeg oh, yeah i know that you just don't swallow the whole nutmeg because that's just all kinds of bad yeah it's not advised no, no. <laughs> so yeah so that was that was what i did for a bit and in fact i think i kind of didn't really take that through to the gosh I'm trying to think now yeah well we sort of I, brought I that of, into the SCA I, I had I've, I've still got my guild sign that I painted and we hang that on the tent sometimes largely because it's pretty mm. um but I don't really do that much anymore my name um I I had the help of the order in Southern Guard to make my name and everything correct because I couldn't spell and my name is is middle welsh and that's why there's a y in it and why everyone pronounces it wrong and my my surname is is loosely um delana is harp of the harp so i kind of drifted away from the spice thing in fact i think i first started using spicer as a surname and mm. then very quickly thought actually i don't like that much anymore <laughs> and <laughs> drifted back and hadn't registered anything by that point so it was fine um yeah mm. so so technically i'm a welsh harpist <laughs> um is where that comes from <laughs> Yeah. Please, please tell me that at some point you've had some kind of Spice Girl theme song. <laughs> I really haven't. I don't think I've ever ah, thought of it. No. Uh, no. Well, I'm it's coming have... back. Yeah. I, yeah I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> Challenge you can accepted. start playing, playing it on the harp. Just choose yeah. one of their songs. I'm going to have to write something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or do it in Latin. Yeah. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> do it in Welsh. Do it in Welsh. Exactly. Do it in Welsh. Okay, this is getting out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, roses really like to enable people. And that's <laughs> what we do. It's always a good thing. <laughs> you have to have something to win that award back. So, like. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I don't think there's much else about my persona. I I think I hadn't really developed it um, fully, and then the the this came along and sort of this now this is my yeah. Like thing. 
I'm, I'm, yes. Yeah. Because for a while, I think during the spice period, the um, the story <laughs> was that I was a widow, and that's how I was able to trade as a woman. Because in the 14th century, that wasn't usually the case with the guild, mm. except. Yeah, so so the story ran that my husband was the spice merchant. He had died, and I was trading, and that's mm. how I was allowed to. So we used to joke that we couldn't get married because otherwise I'd lose my guild status and it would all be <laughs> over. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, that was fun for a while. Mm. Yeah. So you've been on the throne for a few years. What... What would be one of the, the biggest things that you miss about just being and uh, uh, not being a baron, a baroness? Probably um, arbitrarily deciding not to go to a particular event. It sounds yes. really weird to say that out loud, but it was part of our sort of part of our promise when we took it on was that we would what, one of us one of us would get to every event within and, the barony yeah um no matter what and i don't think we've missed a single one i have but You've that's been a couple. from rehearsals unfortunately but yeah. um yeah what we've we've not had one event that we get that neither of us have been to and yeah, occasionally in the lead up to a weekend or something you have that moment of going it would be so easy just to stay home yeah. and <laughs> I, please tell me everyone does this because I don't oh, yeah. think it's and it's not and it's nothing to do with the fact that you know I'm not regretting going along as Baroness or anything it's just that yeah uh, yeah there, it's that we've we've created an obligation for ourselves by saying we will be at every event yeah and we're happy to because it's part of of what we do us making the game better for other people but I think that will be one of the fun things yeah when we do eventually pass them on to somebody else we'll yeah. be able to go we don't have to go if we don't no. want to no I, <laughs> you probably still like, go anyway, but, but you don't yeah, have to. probably but, but for me but yes, for me we don't one, have to get up the court exactly we don't have to get up the court <laughs> for me one of the i think probably one of the things i miss the most and that this is more being english being fair and living in a country with you know harsh sun um because we choose to um to wear the coronets all the time on events um we, we you know we attempt to be visible um i really miss my big floppy hat i i have come back from a couple of events sunburnt because yeah i forget that i'm not wearing it um so i've got a big big floppy pilgrims hat that i used to wear all the time at events and i think i've worn it twice in the last four years at events and that was stuff where we were it wasn't an SCA we, we were there as the SCA trying to promote the SCA but it wasn't an SCA event so I wasn't really in yeah. full baronial persona so I took and the I floppy another, hat along. There was another Nama where we went along but we thought because we because it was a multi-group thing we didn't yeah. want to I don't know we just thought we wouldn't play low key. Blend in. Yeah, be, be low key. I might have worn it at that one as well. So I might have worn it three times in, yeah. in four years. Yeah. There's um, this lovely photo someone sent me from Canterbury Fair this year. Um, and he was on the on the archery line where there was no shade at all. And someone had lent him a parasol. Yeah. Oh, we're so yeah. sweet. We, we, um, I was, was marshalling on I the thank line. that lady so much. Yeah, I was marshalling on the line. Um, so I was helping Marshall and we were doing a rocking horse shoot. So we had acquired a child's sort of rocking horse thing, uh, which you had to sit on while you were shooting at the targets. And somebody that we tied a rope to the front of it and somebody's pulling it to try and make it swing. So there is there is at least one, possibly a couple of photographs. I dread to think there might even be a video. I'm really hoping there isn't. Of me marshalling with pulling on this rocking horse thing with a parasol off my shoulder. Oh, that's amazing. And, um, yeah. Sounds like so much it's fun. around somewhere, but yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. So I miss I miss my floppy hat. Yeah, that's fair. I, see, I'm, I'm from the far north. I don't burn that yeah. easily. I do. He's from London. I do. Yeah, you know, wave a bit of sun at me, and I start to go get crispy. I know. <laughs> 
So but yeah, that's probably it. Hmm. In, in the few short weeks that the actual pandemic had an impact for you guys, uh, <laughs> 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 what, it was fact, a little longer than that. that? <laughs> but I take your yeah. point. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what kind of things did you or your barony do to keep everybody engaged during that time? I think, funnily enough, on the surface there wasn't a lot because there was a lot of, of yeah. un under underground social stuff. Um, yeah not necessarily on a SCA platform but we did a couple of we did a couple of zoom at least one zoom event possibly a couple I think there were two I think we did two sort of zoom get-togethers that had yeah. maybe half a dozen um, quite a few actually I think one of them yeah. might have had the a dozen first one had quite first, a first one had quite a few at it yeah I, I do remember sitting so that so that we could both because the idea was we were going to have breakout rooms and stuff so that if people wanted to go off and do something play, like liars, play, yes. play dice or something on the side so i was sat in one room in the house and you were sat here mm, mm. And, and we could hear each and other and we could hear each other just about <laughs> across the house so you could hear people talking and then you could hear it through the speakers it was very bizarre it was um, we did have liars dice we did have liars Zoom. dice because eventually liars dice is our national game yeah. of this barony it's just become a thing that we do and what so, we're actually famous for is gambling yeah, <laughs> yeah we gamble um yeah so it's become it's a thing a great, so we, we were a simple game to learn and it's a lot of fun yeah and, so we were playing yeah. on online liars dice <laughs> so and, had, and people ended up with two cameras so we, yeah, right. people it's were rapidly one, setting up one camera out. on my phone over the, where the dice landed <laughs> so and, you could yeah. prove stuff and the other one looking at us it was, it was, it was cool. a bit a bit fun it was it was wonderful um so we did that, so that was i think lady eleanor hall set that one up. yeah yes yeah, so we and, did those um, we we wrote um we kept we sent out more missives than we've ever done before yeah um just even i mean it wasn't every week or anything but we just made a point of writing yeah, some just, sort of just, update how's it going this is what we're doing yeah and this, you know, this is what we're doing if you need us we're here kind of just, things just to check in and, um, and keep everyone in yeah we we had the committee was still meeting online so sending yeah. out minutes from that and just sort of yeah doing the best to again assure people that stuff was still happening and then we would go back to normal and you know, yeah things were ticking over and that sort of thing yeah. yeah so and i think a couple of those um bits then sort of spawned other stuff i know there was a couple at least one online painting session there was might have been a couple of those um so i think sort of yeah. after we did the first one people went oh this could be a thing and just did right. small I mean, groups was painting you know time. people that had the same idea they wanted to all try something together or to sit and chat so i think there's a mm. few of those happened yeah. um and then we yeah. were out of lockdown again yeah we were quite so, fortunate was we, and, we i mean i think it was seven weeks the first one yeah. so it wasn't mm. as quick as it could have been but it was as, it was it, it was as long as it had to be yeah well um, it wasn't bad yeah. um, i think we, we came out of was, lockdown and inside about three or four days of coming out of lockdown, we got contacted by a local hall that said, so this booking you've got for three weeks' time, do you still right. want it? Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, right, yes, of course, we had that, didn't we? <laughs> we, sort of right. for, we were sort of vaguely planning for an event, and then a lockdown happened, and it went out the window. <laughs> so we hastily pulled together a... A revel. A, a quick revel, you know, a we're out was of lockdown a, revel. Was it a baronial anniversary? Or did we just call it that because it was close enough? It might I think it was just close enough to our anniversary. We, we called it baronial anniversary. What? The barony we, needs an event. Let's yeah. do something. <laughs> and we threw it together real quick. We were out of lockdown. Um, yeah. then. So that was, um, yeah, two, two weeks after, two, three weeks after we yeah, came out of lockdown, was we're suddenly great. like, oh, yeah, we should do that yeah. thing. Um, I'm trying to think who did that. But anyway, it yeah. was great. Yes, You did, I think. Did I? Possibly. Oh, good for me. I, I went through a little phase of doing um, afternoon events that were basically a rapier tournament and then a potluck dinner and a bit of dancing afterwards. Because it was nice and easy, and yeah, yeah. low low stress. Yeah. Low, and I don't really low. like watching tournaments. It's it's yeah. one of the best things. I, I sit there with a drink, and other people stab each other. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, that works and, well. and occasionally, <laughs> uh, the rape, the the fences are stupid enough to say, "Pick a weapon form for us," knowing full well it's going to be dagger fighting. Double dagger. It's always dagger fighting. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they humor me because of the hat. It's great. 
<laughs> Make them refight double kills too. <laughs> Excellent, as they should. Yes. <laughs> you need a clear winner in that space. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, so, so lockdowns weren't really too bad. And then we've had what? Two, I think three we've more? had two short ones since then, yeah. and yeah, but they've been again, short enough that it's not a problem. Because of the way the nations dealt with things, it's it's yeah, it's been kept to a minimal. So we've still had our events in between. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. yeah. Yeah. Well, we're nearly at the end of our our time, mm. uh, but I do have one one final thing to ask of you. Do you have a favourite story that you like to tell that you'd be willing to share? Favourite story that I like to tell that I'd be willing to share? Hmm. I've told her I've got hundreds of stories. I never remember what they are when somebody says, tell us a story. <laughs> they're not always appropriate. Either. No, they're, not, um, they're not always silly. Um, it, it, it kind of depends where we're going with this. I was thinking of the last tournament at Braithwaite's with the spinning wheel of fortune uh, because that yeah, was that's pretty fun. great. There was one photo that went on Instagram and I'm going to put more up when I get my proverbial together. And they had, the, Master Braithwaite had made a wheel of fortune. And the, so what people were fighting with was chosen at random. One of them was a broken bottle, which was obviously combat friendly and squishy, but it was pretty cool. And the most popular one with the crowd was the haddock. It was a fish. We had a combat haddock. <laughs> and two portions of the wheel were one of them was was crowd gets to choose, and it was always, always fish. fish. <laughs> and, the, there was, and there was a fish. And then there was coronet, which was I get to choose. I have so to say, the much... first time I did choose the fish, and after that I started mixing it up. But... Boffle was a fantastic option. But because, because the, the fish lacked sufficient mass, really, to for people to realise that they were getting struck with it often, we very quickly changed the rules to, if you're going to kill someone with the fish, it has to be a sort of a sideways slap to the face. So, that they know so it really it. was a sort of, yo, know, slap, ah, slap, 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 <laughs> kind of thing with this, this fish. Um, yeah. yeah, it was very silly. It was. Um, it so was that, that was that was good silly. fun. That that will probably become a story that gets repeated quite a few times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think my my favourite story, and again, this this goes back to my archery stuff. Um, in, in all of the martial stuff that I do, so I do rapier and I do do archery combat um, and target, and I'm doing heavy, and I don't go out to win. I go out to have a good time. Um, but I like to go, especially with the archer, I like to go out and pick someone that I'm going to attempt to outshoot. Someone that I know is reasonably good uh, and I attempt to outshoot them. Uh, so the last couple of fairs, it, it's been um, a certain baron down in Canterbury Fair, uh, in, in Sovereign Guard, uh, who, who's no longer landed. Yes, to now. Um, uh, so the, the goal has been to, to try and, yeah, just outshoot Rashad. Um, <laughs> you know, why not? He, he's all good. in good fun he, well, he's, a good, <laughs> he's um, a good archer and last i think this is because rashad outshot him the first year yeah yeah rashad so rashad was actually year, me so it's like i'm going to kind of and um go on go on so this this, this <laughs> not this year this was last year one of the shoots the way they were structured um there was a I think it was a risk and reward shoot there was one shoot and Rashad had gone through the was shooting ahead of me so and when I wandered up to put my score in he's he's sat next to the um lists and I've wandered up and I go what's your score and I, I dutifully gave them my score and he just looked at me and and said words that probably shouldn't be repeated online <laughs> yeah go on, um go on. Uh, you know, something along the lines of you flash something um, I think it was a smug bastard. Oh, smug. That was it. it was smug. A... It was smug bastard. It's like, yeah, okay, great. Mission accomplished. Um, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, pe people like Richard or Luan or Angel, you know, they're, they're all excellent archers. Um, and therefore targets. And, and therefore, yo. Know, <laughs> to beat. Not I, to I, 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 well, <laughs> well, when I get into the combat archery, Angel will become a target. Yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's the, the bit I like to do. And mm. yeah, that, that was a fun one. It was just sort of the, the look on his face because I think he had managed to, to really badly mess that particular round up as well, which didn't help. Uh, I think he risked when he shouldn't. <laughs> anyway, it's in the past. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm taking my takeaway from this is uh, a haddock, the old half and haddock. Yeah, the old half and haddock. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Pitch, pictures will be on Facebook if they're not already. There are some. There's at least one. I'm going to feed some more through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Your Excellencies. It has been an amazing conversation to get to know you both. I definitely had lots of laughs. Yeah. with you <laughs> i'm pleased <laughs> it's good been to fun. talk to you both yeah it's been good fun yes <laughs> and, and thank you everybody for watching tonight um please remember to join us tomorrow where we will be interviewing uh sir rivkin and a mistress of Chaxi from ontia and that will be at 12 o'clock uh east australian eastern standard time and please always remember to, to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you again, Your Excellencies. It has been an honour and a privilege to uh, make the world a little bit smaller and a bit, little bit larger at the same time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, both of you. It's been lovely. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>